My eczema prone skin has been doing pretty well earlier this year until about May when I found my skin getting slightly itchy and irritated. And I found myself saying, it's so hot and humid. It's so hot and humid. It was unbearable. We turned on the air conditioner on full blast and I felt cold, yet not finding any relief on the skin discomfort which started to turn rashy. Come, follow me on my journey towards a happier, healthier, and freer life. Subscribe to be notified on upcoming videos. Some of you may know I launched a collection of cold weather scarves, especially designed to comfort those with sensitive skin. So if you find scarves scratchy, check out freeandcat.com. It's so hot and humid. It turns out that this is an extremely hot and humid year, and it started in May. Before I knew it, the itchy rash turned into an eczema flare-up, and I found myself concerned about its worsening condition. I realized that it was not only the hot weather, but also the high humidity that triggered the flare and ongoing discomfort. The days, whether it be rain or shine, the humidity levels were in the 70s, 80s, and sometimes in the 90s. This humidity not only prevented the flare from healing, but disrupted my sleep as I would wake up and sweat, which triggers itch as well. And I thought to myself at that time, it is only May, and this heat and humidity would only get worse as we approach June, July, and August. If I don't do anything to eliminate this trigger, my skin is going to keep worsening over the next few months. And the longer my skin stays in this worsening state, the lengthier the time it would take to heal after the trigger is removed. So I decided to purchase a dehumidifier. I intensely researched all the dehumidifiers sold on the market and purchased one within two days. The day I got the dehumidifier, we switched it on and it showed that our home humidity was at 58%, higher than a typical comfortable humidity range. For comparison, usually 40 to 50 is a typical comfortable humidity range for most people. But for me, I find myself most comfortable between 38 to 40 percent. With our air conditioning and the new dehumidifier, I was able to sleep well that night. After one day with the dehumidifier on, it brought our home humidity down to 40. I felt a lot more comfortable and I could tell that my skin wasn't worsening. However, since my skin has been flaring for about a month, it probably would take a while to recover. And there will be some good days and some bad days. But the key is, the flare is not worsening because I identified the trigger, removed it, and my environment became a place that helps the flare up to heal instead of worsen. Comfort to me means less itch. Less itch means more healing. Less itch also means better sleep, which equates to faster healing. This recent experience with my skin prompted me to share it with you because I find that these days there is an overemphasis on diet and supplements when it comes to healing eczema. But sometimes the root trigger might be something else in our environment. And the triggers I mentioned in this video today is not something that naturopathic or medical test would reveal. Heat, humidity, and sweating are some of my top triggers of eczema. But I also discovered that some people's eczema disappear when they go to hot and humid environments. Everyone is different, and this is a glimpse of my experience, and I hope by sharing it, maybe it might help someone that's suffering with eczema. What about you? Does heat and humidity trigger your eczema? How do you cope with it? Or does heat and humidity make your eczema go away? Consider sharing your experience in the comments below, because you never know, it could help someone out. I'll see you next time. Thank you.